Hello, welcome. My name is San. This is a reading today for Capricorn. There are no dates on my readings. I trust that when they find you, if they resonate, then they're yours at that time. Capricorn, I'm doing a reading with a blend of decks. You'll see a mix of several decks in your spread today. It's got butterfly effect on the split. Things that were set in motion that you are now seeing the results of and return to innocence at the bottom of the deck. So it's almost as if you're being brought to back to that beginning point, like you're going to see the source of something, which is really interesting because you have ancestry coming up here, which I'm really curious about, about that. I mean, obviously talking about the past, but the past in what regard exactly? Temperance and the messenger of swords underneath that. Oh, and there's the soulmate card and the ace of cups. Are these, is this part of your message? We'll see. We will see. Uh, a message from a soulmate that would be really like kind of recalibrating or rebalancing of your energy coming from like this butterfly effect energy like coming from the past but you're seeing the source of it now so it's like it's catching up with you okay overall energy from the what we've forgotten oracle for capricorn Not yet, not yet. Okay, keys, keys of creation. This card has been in the periphery. This key is significant. It's talking about like the key to something that's coming up like as a surprise at the end of something, then you, you gain the key to it. Again, almost like this butterfly effect having to play out to completion before you're able to access it fully, before you're able to access the message fully. So this is interesting because it may be, whatever's going on, it's like, almost like you're being like, let on a wild goose chase, like a, like a, um, a treasure hunt, not realizing maybe that that's what's occurring, that you're actually being led towards a discovery of something of value, but not knowing that you're in this kind of obstacle course wild goose chase, treasure hunt, until you get there, until you get the key, until you get the answer. And then it's like, oh, now the whole thing makes sense. Like you can look back to the very beginning with that butterfly effect, like trace it all the way back to like stream of consciousness, back to the source of where this movement began, where that first domino fell. And then it will make sense to you. And then you'll feel kind of encouraged because I feel like you may be feeling discouraged right now with the Five of Cups being the first card on the table followed by the High Priestess. It was talking to me about, especially now, it's talking to me about maybe being really discouraged about your own intuition or feeling really disconnected from your intuition because it's almost as if you're kind of going in circles, spinning in circles, wild goose chase energy, not understanding what's going on and almost like being hard on yourself or hard on your guides or hard on the process because it's not making sense to you is what it feels like. And then that's when this ancestry card comes out, your ancestry, beautiful, beautiful card, right? So rich, such a rich energy, a rich image, but it's followed by this empress. So there's this interesting dialogue or relationship between this ancestor and this empress. And I feel like it's almost an evolution of you or is it a, a devolution, a devolution, de-evolving? Because it feels like, well, it's a reduction, which can be progression at the same time, right? It's like less is more, um, minim becoming minimal, because this is almost like really overdone. There's a lot to carry there. There's a richness. The story is incredibly complex. And it's like, this is where it becomes simplified, though it still carries the same potency to it or the same... It's almost like regalness or something. So this is a process that you're going through. You're paring down. You're paring down your appearance or your expression. That seems to be what is happening over the course of this obstacle course is that it's like that you're removing pieces one, one bit at a time, simplifying the expression 
so that it's easier to be perceived or to engage, to be present, to be the, the immediacy, to have an immediacy about you between you and your environment, to be able to see the path or to know the way clearly or to be able to move swiftly because being, so this is interesting. It's kind of like that nine of pentacles, extreme empath card where it's like you're carrying around a whole bunch of stuff that's not necessarily yours, maybe connected to you, but is it necessary that you take it everywhere you go? It's related to your ancestry. It makes things that much more complicated. Although it may be interesting. It might be interesting to know. It might be interesting to look into, but then to leave it aside, right? It's like kind of touch on it, gain some value from it with the six of earth coming up next. It's like there are aspects of it that you can and should carry forward with you, but not the whole thing, not the whole great big story. It's like more like a summary, be more concise. You can still, you can distill it and still keep its essence. And maybe that's what these two cards are talking about with the page of earth and the six of earth. It's talking about really honing in on what is valuable here. Like what, what is the key? What's the essence here? Simplify it down to one specific thing. This is kind of tying into this idea that's been coming up a lot about one symbol containing an entire lifetime worth of narrative or story or information. It's like, so you only need the one image, the one key. You don't need the entire, the entire thing. It points towards it. The key points towards the full story without you having to carry it with you. Something like that. Because I feel like that's what this is talking about. It's like talking about just honing in on one aspect to kind of lighten the load perhaps. Which is difficult to do because the Six of Earth talks about what you're bringing to the table. The value that you have to offer here. And then kind of going back to... The soulmate card. It's interesting because it's the, well, the Ace of Earth. You've got the Ace of Earth coming up again here now, right? This is either a soulmate energy energy and or a rarefied experience, right? It's like, it's like when a wild animal presents itself to you fully, steps in your path and shows itself to you. Is it related to this ancestor energy? They almost feel the same or similar, which is fascinating because... Like I think of this one as like if you've ever had a dog that's like a soulmate to you and you look into their eyes and it's like you can see there's so much more. Looking back to the source. It's almost like the, that that this rarefied occurrence it's like the fox in the reading the other day when the fox appears it means so much it signifies so much it signifies where the course has changed but it's like you're looking back you're looking back at that the return to innocence the butterfly effect it's like this is where the butterfly effect began is when this creature or this individual stepped into your life and now that it's kind of played out, you can look back and see what it all means or what the point of it was. Okay, but you got the six of air and the two of air coming up next. And this is, it's kind of the same thing. These two are both talking about this kind of paring down process or this discernment process in order to be able to make choices, to make your decisions free of baggage or complication, like to, to, to navigate your path in this getup is challenging. It's not very agile or flexible. Everything takes more time. There's more consideration to accommodate for the complexity. So that's what this is talking about. It's talking about paring things down, kind of stripping down the facade or the or maybe the responsibilities or the contract in order to be able to kind of liberate yourself and I'm going back to this, this high priestess is calling me back in, into this kind of, there's some sort of a knowing here in the third eye and the consciousness that is being like remembered as this, as this is being embarked upon. This simplification going from your ancestors or your ancestry, the story of your past or the story of your lineage 
to this present moment, the immediacy of this present moment. There are the connections, obviously, there's connections to your past, but it doesn't have to all be held in present awareness. That's what we're talking about here, is letting some of it go, leaving some of it behind and focusing on the aspects that are your, adding to your true value the things that are worth carrying like the weight of what's worth carrying the weight of because you can um it's almost like creating a sigil right like a symbol that represents a bigger collective or a bigger process or a bigger phenomenon or collective and you can compare down what what you need to carry with you like i see all these pentacles and the antlers here as the things of value that you carry forward that must include with this page of earth something that somebody maybe is showing you with this ace of earth here maybe that's what this ace of earth soulmate is bringing to you kind of pointing out something about yourself i just saw 11 11 on the clock pointing out something about yourself that with the four of earth maybe this really grounding it's a really grounding fortifying energy or a grounding fortifying idea we're talking about like leaving it grounding it putting it down it and like for safekeeping like they're going to watch over your stuff or your aspects in order for you to move forward more liberated this was in another reading in the extended somewhere and it was talking about leaving home or leaving your body and somebody kind of sitting and watching over your body or your stuff so that you can move out freely and explore knowing that all of your stuff is being tended to or taken care of. It's like, that's what this is talking about. So it's like, take what you need. The rest I will watch over for you. It will be here when you get back. And then finding your spirituality is coming up next. Such a beautiful card. Seems to be connected to this ancestry in some regard. Just because of the coloring. But this one looks like she's naked or nearly naked, right? Her wings are exposed. She has wings too, but it's like in the consciousness, it's in the awareness, the liberation or the, the, the flight or the, the, the flight is in the awareness and here with finding your spirituality, it's like this more embodied application. What does that mean? This more embodied awareness of what that means, the flight of consciousness, being liberated from the body, being liberated from the story of the past. Finding it through some sort of spiritual modality, perhaps, spiritual retreat, spiritual process. Finding your spirituality. Return to innocence, the butterfly effect. It's like it's catching up with you or you're remembering. Don't forget this aspect of yourself. It's like somebody is reminding you how incredibly spiritual, intuitive and connected you are. Empathic, of course, right? That's part of the issue here is that your empathy is is catching up with you or is weighing you down somebody is reminding you that you're actually quite into quite ex like exceptionally intuitive and spiritual so finding your spirituality is like that return to innocence like returning to the beginning through this course through this wild goose chase it's almost as if you've forgotten that You've forgotten how to utilize this flight of consciousness, which could have something to do with like leaving your body or even just leaving your comfort zone or leaving your stuff, becoming minimal, being minimized, like minimalist. You know, that's what this Ace of Earth is talking about. Just bringing the one aspect forward, bringing the one aspect forward that seems to be being pointed at here with this page of earth. This one is always like a friend that sees something in you that you've either forgotten or have yet to discover. As you're in this process of paring down and minimizing and kind of rediscovering and finding your spirituality again, your spiritual process, your intuition, your connection to the high priestess energy, 
that's the interesting thing. It's almost as if you're moving in and out of high priestess and empress back and forth through this ancestry, whatever that means, right? It's like, it's almost as if this ancestry is this obstacle course wild goose chase in the middle that is kind of bringing you to this empress position, which almost feels like a regression or a devil de devolution from where you're starting as this high priestess, where you seem to remember or know it all, you're like tapped into it. You remember the power of flight or the flight of consciousness, whatever that means. But by the time you arrive here, this is like this very kind of earthy Capricorn grounded, forgetting your source, forgetting your divinity, perhaps. And that's what this one, this soulmate, that maybe kind of spurred you on at the beginning of this wild goose chase of this obstacle course, the at the gateway to the maze or the labyrinth, there was this one. It's that it's that earthy guide energy kind of nudging you forward in order for you to be able to discover or rediscover in the midst. You know, it's like that going through the gateway, but your antlers and all your stuff don't fit. It's too broad. It's too wide. You have to pare it down. And when you do, it's like that's where you find or remember your spirituality or your, your connection to yourself, your connection to your own intuition. And this one specific seed or key that is like the the access point to the Hierophant energy. Which, okay, the Hierophant is the bridge between, right? I just had a vision the other day of the bridge. There's a brand new bridge opening here between the US and Canada. It's not open yet, but I had a vision the other day that I was crossing that bridge and I was the first one to cross it. There's something significant about that. Like this is, that's the access, that's the key that you're receiving is permission to be the first one to cross this bridge or stand in this position of spiritual authority. Right, this here, it's like finding your spirituality, finding your spirituality, which is the key to accessing this bridge, to bridging this, maybe just finally getting out of the maze of the labyrinth, right? Is that what this is talking about? Getting out, like being liberated from that construct or the matrix or the, the maze. And it's interesting because this card also talks to me about something about yourself that you're not seeing. It's that it's that idea of kind of have, wearing your glasses, but looking everywhere for them. Somebody else has to point out to you that you're actually already in possession of the thing that you're seeking, which seems to be your own spirituality, which is the key, which is the seed, which is the answer to your to standing in your authority in the version or in an expression that is right for you that kind of is unclouded by all of this narrative here what belongs to you and what doesn't belong to you is what's being discerned here kind of following that whole thread back to the past where this began this ace of earth the beginning of your ace of earth journey the beginning of becoming capricorn becoming earthy and grounded and now this one is saying you can leave that here. It's almost like leaving your footprints, implant, planting your feet firmly in the ground, but then stepping out of it. It's like your mark is there. You're leaving your footprints. They'll be here when you get back or your position is secured. You can, you can move forward or you can leave this space. I will tend to it on your behalf. Interesting. Come out from behind. Come out from behind this threshold and join me. That's interesting. So maybe there's more than one energy here because now it's almost like this invitation from the soulmate or this, this creature here that is saying, come onto this side, like of the this side of the bridge and join me here. Maybe that's what this queen of fire is. So you've got, okay, this is interesting. This broken open card followed by this queen of fire. And I feel like this queen of fire is an energy that is like wanting to be met or is waiting for you on the other side of that bridge. This is you, this broken open image is you kind of shaking loose or breaking free of this empress narrative or this empress responsibility. It's like it's shattering your image of yourself or how others are perceiving you. 
allowing you to step forward unencumbered by all of this stuff that has been assigned to you through your ancestry or from the beginning so that you can step up to this queen of fire. It's like she's waiting for you at the finish line. And it's almost as if it's something like you're tempted to arrive there in this presentation. But it's like it's it doesn't need to be that overdone. It's too rich. It's too decadent. Because, because the Queen of Fire is wanting to like transmute, the less we have to transmute, the more ideal this meeting will be. You can't perceive the Queen of Fire clearly, accurately, if you've got too much stuff weighing you down. So you have to break free from that, hold your position or cross that bridge, with just your kind of like naked spirituality or spirit, your naked spirit, right? It's almost like leaving your body behind. So this is like breaking free from the shell of your physicality or the, just the idea of the Capricorn. In order to be able to meet this queen of fire in her element, something like that. I mean, you're going to meet her anyway. It will be a much more efficient process or a more... Uh, pure connection if you arrive without all of this it's like that would get really complicated if you step up to the, to the queen of fire with all of this kind of flammable attire it's going to get tricky so you want to be as clean and clear as possible okay I hope I don't know what I just said I hope that made sense to somebody I'm going to continue to pull cards and create an extended. If you're interested in that, link is in the description. And if not, I will see you next time, Capricorn. Thanks, bye.